Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. Thursday night, the 20th of October. We did the charts of the day. Well, it was a strange day in Wall Street, and it was kind of a uh, squeezy day, meaning uh, that they started out in wider ranges. They got narrower and narrower as they went. Each rally could not get through resistance at the declining top sign or the lateral resistance up at the um, lateral uh, line near 48.45 and near the 21.48 area. But take a look at the pattern that formed. They're kind of wedges. Now looking at the hourly chart, you'll see these wedges formed after a big drop down. If you take a look at the drop down, it's a, a massive one, two, three, and then a one, two, three back up. This could be wave four, and we could get wave five to take us up to 48.80 or thereabout. But if we don't get through the declining top lines, which could be potentially a channel top, then down we go and we go hard. So I'm looking for the market first to get to 48.42 and then get to 48.60 on the NASDAQ 100. On the S&P, this is what it looks like. Also wedges, completely different kind of wedge. And maybe, just maybe, this is a long declining channel right in there, which is going to lead at some point to a move down towards 20.95 in that area. If we crack this to the downside, that may be developing. On the upside, any move I think through 2150 could move it up to 2165 or even 7075 to test upper reaches of resistance. And then we have the major declining tops line coming in about 2160, call it 63.4. So 63.4, 21634, and then um, above that at 2175 and 80 are resistance levels for the S&P. But before you do anything, this wedge here coming off of a down move could very easily lead to more downside. We don't get any follow through. Now, if I take this out and continue to keep this as the trend channel, you can see where the downside could be well below 2100. I'm going to leave it there and let's take a look at some of the stocks for long and short that we were watching today. Obviously, Abeo, which has been one of the more exceptional junior biotechs, has had a beautiful big breakout of a base, started stepping its way higher, recently broke out and had an inside day yesterday until it exploded. So we're in a swing on this one. We already got a point, point and a half on it. The volume was the biggest in a long time today, the biggest volume since um, March of 2015, so a year and a half. The top of the channel shows that we're near it at around 10, but the possibility is we're going to see $11 on it. And maybe if it really spikes, we can see as much as 13 or 14 plus. The 3.8 days to cover, we'll see what we get. The volume, though, was quite strong today. BCRX. Um, you can see that the spike up in August was followed by a multi-month consolidation with four bottoms in this area near the prior tops. That held. And in the last couple of days it's been up, but today it spiked 32 cents or 7.7 percent. It's right above the moving averages and right above the declining tops line. What I'd be watching next on BCRX, if it gets to the 485.87 zone, you're on your way to six in my opinion, or at least 585. Something like that. So and the top of the channel measures as high as seven and a half, so this could be interesting. There's nearly 10 days to cover. A nice rising channel, and we may be breaking off the top bottom of that channel and sp spiking up to retest at least that level in the five and three quarter range. Clovis, well, um, every time the stock jumps as strongly as this did from the 13 range all the way up to 40 uh, and triples that quickly, you always get some kind of pullback consolidation. This entire pattern represents a big wedge in my opinion. You can see the declining top sign. We broke out across the lateral resistance in the 10 day moving average today, closing around on the 21. If we get any further extension there, we should test 38. And through that, you're looking at maybe low to mid 40. So keep an eye on Clovis as it looks pretty interesting. And there's nearly three days to cover as well. Uh, junior oil Comstock uh, breaking out of a base after a long decline, retesting, popping, and coiling, and then breaking out to retest the high and backing off one more time. In the last six days in a row, it's been up. Today it spiked $1.15 to 12.7%. The volume was one and three quarter, almost 1.8 million. That's the biggest volume in a couple months. There is resistance up here uh, going forward about 11, 11, 10. We may test that tomorrow, secondary target 13. We'll see our NT after the big base breakout and the five wave move up gave us wave two here. That pulled back to test the lows from August held. And today was a big reversal engulfing type day coming off 12, 212 to 268 and closing at the high for the day going away on 1.7 million. I suspect we're going to test the zone pretty quickly, maybe 290 as early as tomorrow. If we get through that, our next target is three and three quarters. Well, big news today on DRWI from Sprint on a major contract. 
stock Gap and ran hard and traded a whopping 24 million shares. Never saw that before ever. At this point, I think follow through momentum could take this as high as six and three quarters thereabout. That's my next target. EMAS, um, the sand factory stock, a beautiful rising channel over the last um, eight or nine months. You can see the breakout across this zone and out of that coil a couple of days ago. Today it followed through after pulling back to 1366. It ran up across 15 and closed 1505 up 94 cents or just under 7%. Volume was solid, not huge, but you can see the three days of volume of the breakout shows an increase. It should at least test, in my opinion, make a run at 17 and a quarter, and then we'll see if we have the gumption to get this to the low to the 30s. Four days to cover on that one. Well, the EXAS has been holding up phenomenally for the considering all the biotech pullbacks. Here's a stock that in May was trading in the 540 range. It got up to 2280. It's a 300% gain in 90 days. Anytime you see that kind of move up, you normally get some sort of lengthy consolidation. But without pulling back, I'm very impressed with the action with the low about 1760-70 range on multiple occasions. All we have to do now is take out 22 and a half, 2280. We get through that zone. We're looking at 26. 29 and then 32 to 33 or more. There's nearly 10 days to cover. Watch this one. The OBB held up very well during its consolidation as well. Well, the international game technology has been really, really running, and I haven't done much with it at all. And that's a pity because this was a beautiful right handed extended V with platform, and then another falling wedge. And here's where the real breakout came. And this stock's moved subsequently from 20 to 28 and a half. I wouldn't be chasing this stock, but I do think it's a possibility momentum could carry this towards 32. NVIDIA, breaking back out again, jumping only $1.26 or 2%, but um, I'm looking for this to make a move on 69 and 3 quarters and eventually get into the mid-70s. 6.3 days to cover. Rumors reactivated today on NXPI and Qualcomm. You can see NXPI popped out of the wedge. We're moving from under 100 to 107 and 54 before backing off three points. Still up 3.5, uh, 7.8 million as volume picks up. <coughs> Rumors are we may hear something next week. I'm thinking somewhere about 115. U.S. Steel with the steels moving back sharply today. Came off the bottom of the channel. And after a one, two, three, four, I'm looking for a fifth wave to at least get up. <coughs> back near 27. But the top of the channel beckons mid-30s. We shall see. But let's first get through and keep an eye on 20, 20 and a quarter for tomorrow. If we get through that, then we can start to make some movement. Zen, and last thing on the long side is Zencore today, which was a nice swing from there to there. Met my target and backed off in a falling wedge. Testing the double bottom from August, September successfully. Today popped $1.23 or 6%. With 8.4 days to cover, I'm looking for more upside. At least a test of the 22 and a half, 23 and a half range. Right about there. <coughs> and then we'll see if that as the ability to get the move back up towards 26 and eventually 30. On the short side, looking at some of the boxes shorts that did well today, ADS dropped 10 points, 4.7 percent. This entire pattern is in jeopardy now, and if it does any further downside, I'm looking for 185. But eventually, you can see how this drop, the stock could fall, even another 40 points from there to get down into the 150 range. ATHM may have finally dropped today and broken, but it's got to take out this zone right in here. <coughs> I came out with earnings after hours. The stock is down, as you can see, uh, dropping down into the 112.13 range. So I suspect this is going to drop tomorrow. It may even test the 52-week lows that come in around 110.11. I suspect that may happen. BJ Restaurants with bad earnings also got whacked, dropping down to um, as low as uh, 32 and change my target before bouncing back. We'll keep an eye on this one going forward. And JCOM dropping $1.73 or 2.7%. Looks like it's rolling out of this pattern and should test 60 and then 56. Leggett and Platt, after rolling over and forming a little bear coil, broke down today. I suspect this is going to head down towards 40. And lastly is Red Robin's Garbage Burgers, which after hours is getting creamed and bad earnings. What a surprise. It actually ticked below 40, or did it? Below 40 exactly. And uh, there is some support there. 
which is my, one of my targets. Eventually, I'm looking for 36 and a half or less. And folks, that's the long and short of it tonight. It's not a pretty picture. It's a very tough time for the market. We just have to see what the market wants to give us. For now, HB out.